Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to my monthly tarot journal. Today we're going to take a look at the pages that I created in June of 2021. So in my tarot journal, I am still using this same old setup I've been using um, all year long. So I won't go through all of that. We'll just jump right in to June. So you can see this is a new book that I had to start in um, at the beginning of June because I had filled my other one that was in here. And I just did a basic floral pattern that actually ended up matching what I did in my everyday carry journal. And I kind of liked having the crossover between the two. It was just kind of fun to pull that in. And it's also a reminder that that's something I was doing during that time as well. And you can see here, it's a very simple layout. Just a couple flowers, some gold and black dots, some gold stars, June written here in a you know fairly dark font. And then I just listed out the decks that I worked with primarily throughout the month. So starting off the month, I was doing the um, Make It Magical prompts on my Facebook group all throughout June. And so I started the month off with this big one that we did, which was the Magical Month spread. And it was a nine card spread that I had um, created for that prompt. So in talking about journaling stuff, I originally had printed this off the original um prompt from Facebook and I had the prompts down below and I realized that when I printed it I accidentally left off prompt nine so I just cut that off and reprinted the prompts and put them pasted them down here um, which is why there is this washi here because I actually had to peel it up off the page because of course I didn't notice until I actually had glued it down onto the page right because that's how it goes. Um, also, these are all little teeny tiny thumbnail printouts of each of the cards from my spread, which was fun to do, but pretty time consuming. So I put the cards on my scanner. I was able to get four on at a time, and I basically just reduced them to the smallest amount it would go. And I made a color copy of each of them. I cut them out because I'm totally a nerd. I also rounded the corners and I glued them over the top of where the original kind of just prompt boxes are, right? That just had the numbers. So that was really fun. It came out really cool. Unfortunately, my cards didn't quite fit in the boxes. They were a little bit larger, so I had a little bit of a stack up here because I wanted to keep the Make It Magical prompt or title down here at the bottom just so I could remember that's what I did. So over here we have the um, positions, what each of them mean in green and the numbers that correspond, which card I pulled, and then kind of my... Um, really short, succinct message of what that card meant. So this, like a lot of my larger spreads, is kind of the culmination after a, a some more detailed journaling that I do on a separate sheet of paper. So I kind of just like brain dump my journaling, um, my readings, I mean, onto a separate sheet of paper. And then I kind of go back and coalesce that into a um, much smaller, easily digestible message so that when I come back to this reading, um, you know, later on, or like I could now at the end of the month um, and look and see what, you know, what the main takeaway was, because I don't necessarily need all the rambly bits that I um, kind of write out in between. I just need the main takeaway message. And I just did some basic doodling here and threw some washi down here because I just, I felt like the little plants were just sticking out out of nowhere and that didn't really work for me. So I just covered it with some washi. All right, so going into my first week, as I mentioned in my monthly reflections, I was pulling weekly cards from the Liminal Spirits Oracle and I made a full-size color copy of them over here. Um, the first, I think the first couple weeks I was incorporating the doodling from like incorporating doodling into the card and I really, really like that and I don't know why I forgot to do it on the rest of them, but I did. Um, and it wasn't that I like lost interest. I just like, I literally just kind of forgot. So I have my full color image. I had the doodles here kind of just tying that image into the page. That's something that I've done um, in other journals and in other, you know, my other tarot journal as well. I started that practice with the Witch's Wisdom Tarot Journal, which was really fun. And it's definitely something that I enjoy doing now. 
And I also have my little rune. So every week I pulled a rune in association with the liminal spirit card. And I made like just a little circle rune out of some gold ink and cut it out in a circle and pasted it on my book because my little runes are actually um, little white runes. They're ceramic and they're super cute. So on this side, you can see I pulled basically a ton of information from the guidebook, which is great. I pulled kind of the base um, information from the tree in for the card, not always a tree. Um, I, there are three kind of like takeaway prompts or messages for each card in that particular guidebook. And so I just real succinctly kind of wrote them down in one line to kind of just tell me what I need to do that week, some things that I need to do or to think about or to be mindful of. And I have my rune here and then a little bit of a kind of wrap up reflection message and the date. So this was how I started my week. Um, every week I did this uh, most of the time on Sunday. So Sunday to prepare for the week coming. Although I can't remember if May 30th is a Sunday or not, but moving forward, that's what I did. It must have been. Um, anyway, here's moving into my first week of June and I was working with the Future Ancestor Tarot. And for this one, I did some real basic journaling in terms of the design of the page, just kind of a big writing Monday, really big. That's a practice that's kind of kept carrying, carrying over from some of my other journals that I've done um, over the past few months. And it's something that I go back and forth on whether I use it or not. Most of the time I do really like it because it really draws my attention to what day that this reading was on. Um, for this particular one, I pulled pieces from the guidebook for each of these three cards and combined snippets from the guidebook for each of the three cards into this one overall message, which was really wonderful. I really enjoyed that. On Wednesday, I did a sort of reflective journaling, just looking at what, what this card meant or this reading meant for me. And that was a process that I pretty much followed most of the month. I did a basic reading on Monday. I would kind of check in with where things are going on um, kind of midweek and then on the at the end of the week I was doing a sort of wrap up three card reading. Now this process changed from um, week to week throughout June. It wasn't like something that I was like following a strict regimen for it, right? It was just kind of a thing that I was trying, kind of playing with and seeing how it went. And you'll see that I definitely changed things around here and there. So again, I did that three card reading. This is just um, torn out um, gift wrap paper. I have my date here. Again, pulling those messages from the guidebook for the three cards and making one succinct message out of all of them using the guidebook guidebook verbiage i love doing that and i get really excited when i find a deck that 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 the guidebook works really well for that it's not always the case but sometimes it just it works beautifully and for this particular deck that practice works beautifully with the little white book that's included so again another little doodle here and um, my own reflections on kind of what what has happened what the week has meant, what the week has brought, um, and what these kind of cards and, and the readings that I've done throughout the week have kind of meant to me. Um, so I, on Saturday, I pulled a card from the Oracle of the Dragon Fae. Just, I was just kind of trying to get to know the deck a little bit. Um, I just put a color copy of it in here. I read the entry in the guidebook and then just kind of filled in the blank space with the dots. Nothing super fancy, just kind of giving me the opportunity to play with that deck a little bit. So here we are in the next week. I didn't skip a page, did I? No. Okay, so here we are in the next week with Cedar. We have my Wonju rune. And again, I didn't do the the tying the colors in. I wish I would have, but that's okay. Um, and again, following the exact same layout because I'm basically following the exact same process. Pulling my card, reading the guidebook, pulling my rune, thinking about, um, you know, pulling those aspects in that I want to remember and then journaling about what that kind of is going to mean for me for the week coming up. So here we have probably my favorite spread in the month. Um, I felt like my journaling was a little bit flat this month, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, and I think it's just because I had so many things going on, so many projects going on that I didn't get as much time to work on my journal as I really wanted to. But I do really love the way that this particular page came out. Um, I do believe this was a page that I did the week in my tarot journal um, for my Weaver level membership. But 
I used my um, Everyday Witches. Again, you can see I had the date here, some book page, and um, this, again, is writing from the guidebook, which I can tell because it's it's in a different color. That's how I distinguish in case this is your first um, journaling video you've seen of mine. Anything that is in a different color is generally, with the exception of titles, obviously, but anything that is written in a different color is generally not my own writings. So I know that this came from the guidebook because anything that is my my own writings, my own reflections is always in black. And that's just a way for me to really easily visually distinguish between what are my thoughts and reflections and what are thoughts that have come from the reference materials. So again, you can see I followed the same process this week of doing the um, three cards to start my week off, my a message from the guidebook. And then I came back on Wednesday and kind of tapped in with that message and thought about what it was meaning for me the, for out through the week so far and how things were kind of evolving. And then, oh, maybe this is my favorite one. Like this week is my favorite one. I guess that's really what I mean to say. So here on Friday of that week, I did another three card poll and kind of looked at my, my message for the week. So this is more of reflective on the week that I've had so far, right? Um, Friday's like kind of the end of the work week. Um, and I've got some book page in here, some washi, my cards obviously, and then this is some doodling that I did. Um, I was pulling in cedar. I do remember mentioning that in the video, so you can see that kind of mimics that. I wish I would have pulled cedar here too, but that's okay. And then on um, Saturday, I did this kind of like collage journaling page um, using one of the cards from the um, Everyday Witches Oracle. This was just a card I pulled, again, kind of similar to the Oracle of the Dragon Fay, where I was just kind of trying to get to know the deck a little bit. So I pulled a card from it, and then I just did this collage around it. And this It was really fun um, just to kind of spend a little bit of time paper collaging, uh, making art with the card rather than kind of focusing so much in on the readings and the meanings and trying to... Um, you know, delve deeper into that side of things. This was really just playing with the artistic expression of the card and kind of letting it come to the surface and letting that be the focal point more than the divinatory message that we would find in the guidebook or maybe by tapping into our own intuition. This was more about the art for me. This was more about the energy that was expressed through this card. And it was really fun. And this is something that I used to do all the time in my tarot journal. And I don't do it as much as I used to. I do it in other journals. Um, but I knew I do need to remember to, to kind of just take the time to do this more often because this is really a fun practice. And I love working with my decks and combining with combining them with some collaging in that way. So moving into the next week, we have, um, again, my card from the Liminal Spirits Tarot. Oracle, <laughs> Liminal Spirits Oracle, which was the deer. We have Fehu, my rune, and again, same same exact layout that I did um, with my guiding message from the guidebook, my rune, and then my own reflections, and of course, the date at the bottom. So this next week, I was working with the Mystic Fairy Tarot, which I did quite enjoy. Um, I tried to do some like uh, colored pencil drawings or doodles that kind of match my cards a little bit and that was fun we have the bubbles here that we see in this deck as well um, and I have again same kind of process that I think I've been following pretty consistently so far throughout the the month um, where I pulled my three cards on Monday I did let them kind of go across the page like this even though it kind of looks like this card is is um, associated with Wednesday it's not. I know that these were the three cards that I pulled on Monday and then I just did my Wednesday wrap around it because I had doodled this big thing over here before I put the cards in and then I realized I didn't really leave room for the cards and writing, right? So um, I just did them across the whole page and even though this does, again, it looks like it, it's associated with Wednesday, but I did leave a little bit of a visual gap here, a little bit more than I normally would. So that also does tell me that that's kind of a part of this and this is a kind of a part of that. So that's just kind of just some tips that I found along the way. So here's my writing, um, my reflection on my reading from Monday. Wednesday, I have kind of my check-in journaling. Again, just some doodling that I did. 
And then on this Friday, instead of pulling another three cards, I just pulled one card to kind of wrap up my um, message or wrap up my week, so to speak. So I have the doodles that relate to the card, and this one was fun. Um, a little bit larger image of the card than I had, you know, than these little thumbnail ones. These are reduced down to 50%. This is probably closer to 65, maybe 70 if I had to guess. So again, a little bit from the guidebook and my own reflections kind of on what this card means as a wrap up for the week for me. Then on this Saturday, I was um, getting to know the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle. So I pulled one of those cards and again, just kind of did some doodle work around it. And this one, I actually pulled in the design or some somewhat the design that's on the back of the Mystic Fairy Tarot. Um, I really like the design that's on the back of that card for some reason or on that deck. And so I wanted to kind of show that these were kind of all working in, in correlation together. So I incorporated the design from the back of this deck over here with this card. And you can see the bubbles here as well, tying back into that Mystic Fairy Tarot. But of course the card comes from the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle. So just a little fun way to kind of bridge those two things together to kind of show that while this is not really a part of this whole week-long reading session that I did, um, it does still kind of relate. It's still in the same week. So here we move into the next week and we have my snake card. I really like this card. And um, we have my rune, which was Thurzon. And again, same exact process that I've been following for the whole month. I really like this practice. Um, I may continue it into July. So here in the um, that next week, I was actually still using the Mystic Fairy Tarot, um, and this time I combined it with the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle. I think I forgot that I did that because I didn't actually show that as a pairing in my monthly reflections, but that's okay. You can see that I did it here. Um, these decks, the Mystic Fairy or Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle does have a border on it, um, but when I made a color copy of it and reduced it down, I just cut the border off because I, I don't like the border that's on it. So here we have kind of my keyword takeaways that are from the fairy wisdom um, because once I kind of squish it down like that, it's a little, they're a little hard for me to read. And again, my kind of thoughts on what, what's going to be going on this week. Um, I suppose this is a little bit kind of divinatory because it's kind of looking at what does the week ahead have for me. Um, but I also know that that's like, it's not fixed, right? This is kind of like, if I stay on the trajectory I'm on, this is what I need to keep, I'll be aware of for this, this coming week. Um, I don't see it as being like, this is for sure going to happen. That's just not how I read tarot, but it is a little, a little divinatory, I suppose, a little fortune tellery, um, in the, just the sense that, yeah, if I stay my course, if I if I keep going the way that I'm going, you know, this is the, the energies that I might encounter and some of the things that I might need to be aware of throughout the week. So just this is just a little bit how I read kind of trying to explain how this energy kind of flows through the week for me, because it is kind of like a almost like a week ahead reading, so to speak. This is just kind of the energies and the things that I might need to be aware of and to think about throughout the week. So then on Friday, I did not do a poll on uh, Wednesday or any sort of journaling in between these two. I had a lot of stuff going on this week. It was a really busy month overall. Um, but Friday I did come and I, I pulled a card and I got the Hanged Fay. And I just did, you know, you can see there's like no doodling. Although now I'm looking at these little flowers going, those would have been really fun to doodle. But I didn't because I was busy. Um, I just pulled my card, put my copy in here, wrote my date, and then my reflections about, you know, what the week has been and how have these, the energies from these cards maybe manifested throughout the week. So that's been really fun. And here we're actually going into the last week of the month. And to be perfectly honest, all I did the last week of the month, because it was kind of the last few days of June and then moving into the first few days of July. Um, again, super busy time for me. So I just pulled my weekly cards that I had that energy along with my rune for to kind of set the groundwork or set the energetic stage for my week. And then I didn't do any more um, entries into this particular journal. I didn't work in it in terms of, you know, doing any sort of a, a daily card poll. And that's okay. Like pretty much I skipped. 
I skipped the last week of June and that's okay. Sometimes that happens. I get busy, things happen. I was all actually um, working in another journal with some other tarot things during the, um, this week. So it was like I was still working with my cards. I was still tarot journaling. I was just doing it in a, in a different way because I'm kind of experimenting with some other things. And so, yeah, that's that was how it, it ended up, you know, kind of wrapping up my, my month in my tarot journal. You can see I don't have a ton of pages done, but this is, you know, plenty for me, I think. I do really like the way that they came out. Again, this... These two pages I think are my favorite. I really enjoyed my work with the decks that I used this month. Um, this one was a lot of fun. I do want to take some time to come back and, and look at this one a little bit deeper, but it's been a really fun, fun month working in my tarot journal. Um, nothing else in here has changed. I do still have my five-year deck tracker in here. And I do believe that I put my May, just the gentle tarot, I love that. So yeah, I put my, my decks in here for June and I kind of, it's fun to kind of play with the fonts too, like handwriting the fonts, like the Mystic Fairy Tarot, that font and this font with the Liminal Spirits Oracle, both of those were from the box themselves. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, and then this is just my same insert that's in here in the beginning. So that is it. That is another month done in my tarot journal. If you'd like to find out more about any of these decks, be sure to check out my June Reflections where I chat about all the decks I worked with last month. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.